Let's go ahead and do some introductions first. So uh, welcome today. My name is Josh Brothheim. I'm going to turn on my video just to say hi. Uh, should be on. There we go. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Uh, based out of Portland, Oregon, as uh, you may have discovered in the chat. Um, and while I do have my name on the slide, I do have two of my peers helping me. So uh, we have Pavel today and Tram, who are going to be assisting with uh, questions um, and anything else that comes up. So hey, Paul. Um, yeah, let's get going. Let's do this thing. So uh, I'm going to turn off my video just to save a little bandwidth. I was having some issues earlier. And away we go. So um, like I said, any questions, post them in the chat, um, ideally relevant to what we're discussing today. But any questions at all, that's the place for them. Um, well, today we're going to be talking about application observability with Sumo Logic. So over the next 60 minutes, we're going to be doing a workshop and talking about a lot of topics um, and doing some labs with them as well. So uh, we're going to talk with about an introduction, which is really what we're doing right now. Uh, we're going to dive into observability with Sumo Logic, and then we're going to start to look at tracing with Sumo Logic Coffee. That's going to be an example that we're going to use today. It's a I don't know, I think it's a fun example. Um, and then we're gonna talk about real user monitoring. That's gonna be the focus of today's uh, class or workshop in that application observability uh, discussion. And then with real user monitoring, there's gonna be a lot of additional features of Sumo that are gonna help us out, so, such as service maps, traces, and span analytics. And we're gonna look at those. When we're not gonna look, well, we're gonna look at those. Uh, we're gonna do some hands-on exercise with those. So there's certainly gonna be more to learn about those components. Um, today is really a, a good, well, 60 minute workshop, um, but we will get our hands kind of dirty in there. Uh, oh, a reward for today. Let me go ahead and post this uh, link. I forgot about it already. So for, stay, uh, for joining us today, um, we're going to reward you. Um, of course, we're gonna reward you with knowledge, um, but we're gonna also reward you with some swag. Um, one of the better parts of most <laughs> conventions and uh, meetings uh, with swag, uh, often sometimes better than the content at uh, different uh, um, uh, locations we've gone to before, I'm sure. And so today we wanna get you some swag. We want you to learn, we wanna get you some, uh, some socks, some other stuff. So assuming you stay through today, I'm gonna to leave the link there. Uh, please attend the full day, but I did wanna get that link there. Um, and then we'll ship something out. Um, the shipping information is all private, so um, we're not gonna share it, no marketing material. So an opportunity for you to just be rewarded for attending today. The cool little gift set as you see here. So now we're rewarding you with content, let's reward you with knowledge. And before you do, or before we do, or excuse me, uh, I have a quote here that I think is funny, <laughs> apropos of today's discussion. What it says is, we replaced our monolith with microservices so that every outage could be more like a murder mystery. And what we're going to be talking about with observability, specifically application observability, is starting to look at our services, our things that are going on, and getting an understanding of what occurred rather than just getting a idea of, oh, something happened, an error occurred, we can start to dig deeper. And, and if you relate it to the uh, old board game Clue, start to understand that it was Professor Mustard in the observatory with the wrench and really get down to the details of what was going on, why it was happening, who done it, and that was, that, that's gonna be important for us. All right, so talking about observing microservices. Modern applications are increasingly complex and the microservices architecture is beneficial for these complex and evolving applications. These complex applications leverage distributed, distributed technologies, uh, cloud infrastructure and container and orchestration tools such as Docker and Kubernetes. In addition, the connections between microservices, orchestrators and underlying cloud resources is also growing in complexity. This complexity leads to situations where unforeseen events, unknown unknowns that are more prevalent and come with mysterious behaviors and failure modes can occur. So application performance monitoring is an important aspect of observability that we cover now with these new capabilities. Traditionally, metrics have been used to provide classic monitoring, but it only looks for the known failure conditions of the application. Observability requires you, to, requires you to completely understand the application so that you can identify, troubleshoot, and fix any conditions, known or unknown, about the application and its health. 
and to gain insights from the collected data, just collecting, analyzing, just collecting and analyzing metrics and logs is not enough. It requires more than that. So we need more information to give us a better picture of what's going on. Tracing the transactions, troubleshooting problems real time in distributed dynamic cloud and microservice environments is very difficult. Transaction tracing makes this a lot easier by letting you see details about what exactly is happening and how it impacts your users. And that's what we see hovering around our ring here is the ability to add tracing to this observability solution and just get more information. Now, transaction traces. What is it? A transaction trace gives you a detailed snapshot of a single transaction lifespan across your application environment. A trace follows the course of a user's request or system call from its source to its ultimate destination. You can use transaction tracing to profile and monitor microservice-based apps, architectures, locate failures, and perform, perf improve performance. In fact, logs and metrics and traces are the three pillars of the observability system. They're complementary to each other, but tracing is the backbone of the observability solution. A more simplified example of a transaction trace, let's say you get something shipped, maybe a care package from Sumo Logic to yourself. Along that step is a transaction of getting it from A to B. But there's going to be different hops, different stops. Your package is going to get, go to the airport. It's going to end up in a shipping center. It's going to be sent to the local post office. It's going to have different steps. And transaction tracing is all about seeing those steps and helping it to understand what occurred at each step. So we're going to dig into tracing and the Sumo Logic Coffee app. Like I said earlier, any questions, go ahead and put in the chat. We'll uh, either answer them in the chat or uh, bring them out to the group if appropriate. But otherwise, I'm going to keep chugging along here. And want to talk about observability at Sumo Coffee. So today we're going to be using Sumo Logic Coffee as our example. And tracing is going to play a a crucial role in tracking transactions of an app on a microservices based architecture. Even in Sumo Logic Coffee, where we have the simplest three tier application, it's going to require going through a load balancer, two, data, two, uh, two servers, and a database. Observability means being able to ask any question you need about your application and how customers are interacting with it. With Sumo Logic's query language, you can do this with logs and traces. This is a large differentiator. No other tool provides the ability to slice and dice your span data using a powerful query language like Sumo Logics. What we need is a view to into this app's environment. And we're going to talk about some of those views now. So let's proceed to see how tracing works with the help of a simple example. So as I had just alluded to, welcome to Sumo Logic Coffee. We have thousands of locations around the world. And Sumo Logic Coffee has made available online ordering to its customers in two locations of the pilot program. And we've expanded our menu to now serve pastries to accompany the great coffee that we're known for. So this is a production organization. We're out there selling coffee all around the world. And for two specific locations, those or, uh, locations are going to get the uh, privilege or test pilot program of pastries. Okay. How does computers, technology, tracing fit into ordering a cup of coffee? Well, let's, let's see. Oh, and let's not jump too quickly with the mouse. So what we're looking at here is a successful order at Sumo Logic Coffee. The customer is going to place their order. The order is going to post to the barista. Our barista here is going to turn on the coffee machine and get it running. The machine is going to do some heavy lifting here. It's going to check that it has the amount of ingredients it needs. If it does, it's going to grind those beans and start to create that cup of coffee. Coffee needs beans and water. So the machine's going to check to have, make sure it has adequate water levels in it as well. Then it's going to add that water into that cup of coffee, does its mag magic, and now the coffee is ready for the customer. Now, we're not a uh, charity organization at Sumo Logic Coffee. We do have to charge for our, our beverages. And so the customer is going to need to pay for that order. Order is going to need to be approved by the credit card. In this example, we'll just assume a credit card transaction versus cash, but it's going to need to be approved. Now that customer is able to pick up their coffee order and walk away. And so in regards to ordering a cup of coffee, each step is a microservice. And so using technology, using Sumo Logic, we're going to start to look at those microservices. And if something has gone wrong, 
start to understand what or why. Now for a microservices review, we're looking at front end and back end um, sections of, this, of, of the transaction. We're gonna look at the front end service. So the customer, as it says here, customer viewable portion so that we can see what a customer is experiencing. The customer is gonna order that coffee and some pastries using our app. That order is gonna to go to the Sumologic Coffee Barista and turn on the machine. And so that front end process is important to us and we wanna make sure it worked properly. Assuming it did, the back end is just as important. Once we have that order, we need to make that cup of coffee for our individual. And so as we see here with the back end coffee processing, the order is gonna Post, the barista is going to enable that coffee machine and those other microservices are going to start. That machine service checking for those coffee beans and water level. That payment service checking for uh, how much each item costs and adding it up using a calculator service. And so Sumo Logic is going to help us with both. So what we're going to look at first is real user monitoring, starting with the front end of this diagram or this picture here, let's talk about the customer experience. And that's what real user monitoring is really going to help us with. So what we have here is a more technical version of real uh, a definition of what real user monitoring is, excuse me. And what it is essentially is providing operations team with the understanding of the full end to end experience of a transaction, starting with the user's browser click. So the user is going to open up our app, as we'll see in a moment, to order that, those pastries, order whatever they want, coffee. That's the first interaction with Sumo Logic Coffee. And from that first click into our app, we want to make sure things are good. We want to get an understanding of what's going on. Real user monitoring is going to give us the insight to understand that user experience, but we're going to be able to filter or break down our segments by various information, geographic region, operating system, browser type. And these are all going to be helpful to understand the user's experience, if the user is having problems, is it isolated to one type of user just from a, a specific region, a specific browser type, whatever it might be, and help us understand and troubleshoot those problems. So let's go ahead and, and dig deeper here. Now, what are the benefits of real user monitoring? Well, here they are right here. And so with RUM, as it's referred to, and I'll, I'll refer to it probably a little bit as both, uh, performance understanding the benefits is, of, of that performance is going to be super important. So that as just described, you can understand how the real user is interacting with the browser, the application, including metrics that we're going to look at like UI paint events. That's going to be really helpful for us to understand when a user is first able to view a website versus when they're able to interact with it. And we'll talk about those differences uh, in a few moments. Um, and we'll actually look at metrics and data on that, those uh, visualization. So visualizing, as it, as it says, the code as running the browser. And then those insights, getting the location, that device type, the browser type, all that other stuff. Where did they click on the page? What, inf uh, what component did they interact with? That's going to be important. And we're going to get that information and we're going to be able to utilize it. So what we're going to do now, and we're actually going to do this, we're going to do this exercise as a group. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm thinking, yeah, let's go ahead and do this as a group. So. Um, Let's go ahead and get everybody logged in here. I'm going to go ahead and share a uh, PDF, which is going to be uh, going to serve as our lab guide for today. So I'm going to add that to the chat in a moment. There it is. So you should be getting that um, PDF. Go ahead and open it. Uh, while you're opening it, I'm going to do a uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a kind of a, a, a preamble to our lab, if you will. And so with our walkthrough that we're going to do in a moment, so get that lab guide ready, we'll discuss the credentials shortly. So uh, well, we're going to log in and as a group in a moment, just want to set, set, every, set everybody up for success here. What I want to share, though, before we do our walkthrough, as we're doing it, is our case study. So as just described, here is our Sumo Logic Coffee interface, as well as our application that now has pastries in it. And this is a live app. So I can go ahead and jump in here and interact with this app. I'm going to put this in the chat to let you interact with it. I'm crossing my fingers to see capacity, but let's see if it, it works. But what we have in here is a real working app. 
here I can go in and the images will load in a moment. I can go ahead and I can place my order for my cappuccino or my espresso. Like I said, pastries are now available in limited locations and I can order those and you know, go ahead and do so. So kind of playing around and I can go ahead and check out, pay. So it's a, it's a working app and let's assume it's a production app. We're not really selling pastries in different locations yet, but uh, maybe for Illuminate next year. So getting back to our case study here, we have our um, we have our interface that uh, users and as you are able to play with. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Sumo Logic and start to look at what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, you should have your guide open. So everybody should have a application observability workshop guide. If you didn't get that PDF, uh, uh, it's in the chat, but uh, go ahead and let us know if you did not get it or can't open it up. Um, we're going to go ahead and share credentials. So I'm going to do that now, it's kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but I think it will work out well. So we're going to go ahead and log in together into Sumo Logic. So the credentials we're going to use for today are going to be service.sumologic.com. That's going to be the URL. The email address is going to be training plus analyst number, number, number at sumologic.com. And you're going to select a three digit number. So uh, if you haven't played with us before, uh, that's how we do our training credentials. So maybe you want to be training plus analyst 007, training plus analyst 123481. Pick a three digit number. Um, we have a small group, so you don't need to tell me the number. Um, sometimes people do, but if, once you log in, if you could let me know. And then the password is going to be sept 2021 exclamation point. So let me go ahead and paste that into the chat as well. If you have any problems getting logged in, let me know. It's probably going to be a typo, but that's okay. We're here to help with that. Um, a question, can you use the login I used for the previous session? Yeah, you can actually. So uh, if you've used the login with us today, you can use it here as well. Yeah, I just wanted to think that out. Um, but sure, go right ahead. So uh, good see, seeing people logged in. Like I said, if you can't get logged in, let us know. Um, if you don't want to log in, don't want to play along, that's fine. You're going to watch anyhow. So um, you'll still get a, a full full experience here. Yeah, it looks like a good amount are logged in. I'm going to just kind of, there we go, a few more. All right, I think we're doing pretty well here. Yeah, there they go, a whole bunch of them. Cool. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Michael, for uh, pasting in that um, those those credentials again. Um, OK, so now we should be logged in. And so we're going to go ahead and um, start to reference our lab guide here. I think we're just going to jump in and do this real user monitoring uh, walkthrough together. So in regards to the training environment should kind of prep you a little bit there. Um, it is a training environment, as you probably gathered. Um, it does get cleaned up periodically. It does get shared periodically as well. So as you're seeing today, so um, don't put anything proprietary in there. Don't put anything you wouldn't want you know, others to see or concerned it might get deleted. Uh, the password will change in about a week. So um, we'll have a new one for October, but certainly feel free to use these uh, credentials for uh, today, tomorrow, and, and for the rest of the month, of course. It's going to give you access to our lab environment. So what we have is a lot of different data that we've uh, loaded in there. Some of it's going to be Sumologic Coffee related, as you'll see right now. A lot of it's going to be related to other services and features of Sumologic. And so um, we're only going to use a limited section of it today. So for our scenario here, as it says in our little guide here, um, what we're doing is uh, we're at Sumologic Coffee. The app is going to utilize Kubernetes platform. It has the several microservices like we discussed, uh, the water service, the bean service, the payment service, user login, didn't really talk about that, but all aspects of getting a user logged in and, and uh, ordering their coffee, cup of coffee. Excuse me. Um, as discussed that lab scenario, the customer is going to order their coffee, the barista is going to enable the coffee machine, machine service is going to run, we start to discuss all that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and ultimately look for an order we're going to get there, not going to be the first step we do, but throughout today, we're going to go ahead and start to look at these orders, look at one that might have not gone successfully, and start to figure out what has gone wrong with it, among other sections. But remember, we're starting with the front end, that real user monitoring. So let's go ahead and look at that and see what this shows us. We should be logged into Sumo, and I should be as well. Um, there we go. Not sure where my bookmark bar appeared again. I hit it, but 
no real secrets in there. I'm going to log in with a similar account to you so I can play along. And you're now logged into Sumo Logic. Um, hopefully, you've been in here before, but for many of you, this might be your first time coming in. So, uh, certainly welcome. Uh, the front home page is pretty much exactly that a home page, a, a jumping off point. Now, you may notice in your account, you might have tabs across the screen, uh, top of the screen. And this is because this is an account that's shared. It's possible somebody else has come in here previously and done something. And that's fine. We're not going to, uh, it's not, not going to be a problem. So, feel free to gl close those tabs, clean things up. Uh, front page is, like I said, traditional home screen, giving you the ability to start uh, start running here. And um, that's really what we're going to do. So um, normally, if you've used Sumo before, you might do a log search. Uh, we're known for our metrics. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on um, some other tabs that you might not be as familiar with. And the first tab we're going to start with is the Explore tab. So we're going to go ahead and click on Explore, or we can go to Plus New and go to Explore. There's many ways to do the same thing in Sumo Logic. It's a gift and a curse. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on Explore. What we're now doing is we're going to our Explorer tab. And this Explorer tab allows us to view various information about our organization, in this case, all our account data, based on what we're interested in. So what we have under Explore by are some different views that we can utilize. We have an AWS observability view. Great view, just not really relevant for right now. We have some Kubernetes uh, information views. Once again, just great views. They show information about Kubernetes, just not appropriate for today's discussion. The portion we want to go to is really user monitoring because that's what today's discussion is focused on. So go to the Explore by and go ahead and select real user monitoring. And feel free to poke around. If you want to go ahead and check out the AWS observability view and what's going on there, um, uh, you know, feel free to. I'm not going to stop you. Um, keep in mind, it is kind of test lab data. So while some of it might not show up, uh, others will so. But let's get back to that real user monitor that other uh, AWS observability is for a different class. So once we select real user monitoring, we're now in our real user monitoring view. And so what we should see in here is our coffee bar app. Let's see, why do we not have anything painted here? Um, and then we can go ahead and let me just check this. So hoping to see some, there we go, sorry about that. So what we can do is we can go ahead and start to use the uh, dashboards to start to view information about what's occurring. Um, and so I'm gonna have a select uh, the performance analytics application dashboard. So under dashboards, this is gonna be dashboard uh, number 13. And what we're getting insight into here is kind of what I promised earlier, information about our, our users and what they're doing. Specifically, going to focus on the top browser or this third, uh, this line right here, this uh, row rather, excuse me, of top browsers, top operating systems, and top geolocations. What I'm now starting to see is information about where my users are ordering coffee and pastry. Remember, I just mentioned this is a uh, pilot program where we're uh, testing with two locations around the world. Well, here we see those geolocations by request. We have some our location in California at our headquarters, our pastry, and our in uh, Germany, we have a location that's uh, testing the pastries. We see the operating systems that are being used by the requesters, primarily using Linux. Well, that's interesting that we might want to cater more towards the Linux operating system. Maybe there's um, features we can utilize in Linux that might be advantageous for our app. And then our top browsers, this is also probably more interesting than operating system, probably should have gone left to right, but um, what we see here are what browsers are being utilized. So we see Firefox 89 and headless Chrome 91. If we saw an old version, what if we saw Firefox 55 pop up in here? Well, that's important to know. It doesn't necessarily mean that we need to support it, but it does mean that um, that browser is being used and maybe we do need to support it. Maybe we need to, you know, just for that particular browser, we need to add some components that haven't been used in seven years to a browser or something like that. And this is giving us that insight. Um, so that's what we're starting to see here. In the lab guide, we do have uh, some kind of questions in there. We're going to kind of not skip through them, but I uh, just kind of verbally talk about them. And that's what I, so for the geolocation, we're starting to see that geolocation information. 
what we're seeing that's more important though, possibly, and I would say it is, is the website performance. I want us to scroll down a little bit further. So just to make sure we're all together, we should be on dashboards. Uh, we should be uh, seeing the top browsers uh, by request. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, uh, we should see that website performance. And with this website performance, what it's telling us is website performance, hence the name. We're not creative with our names. But what it's showing us is the different portions of the page load compared to when the person started to load the page. So the person uh, goes to our pastry website and they click a button. Now, there's different components of things that need to load during that sequence. There is the time to get to DNS resolution. That's going to take a certain amount of time. And here we start to see it charted. When the page is interactive, this is going to be an important metric because this is going to be when the page is interactive, hence the name, when the page can be uh, used, when it's functional, not necessarily when it's fully loaded and drawn and has all its images, but when it's interactive. And that's important because that at that point, a user can still get their cup of coffee and they might not see all the fancy uh, graphics that load when the page is finished, but they're still able to get to that step of at least functionality, which is probably most critical. We see that time to page load, like I just referred to here. And so we're starting to see each step of the process, how long it's taken. We're also seeing spikes here. So what we're seeing is periodically every hour, this is a training environment. So this data is um, uh, repetitive or log gen in that respect. But what we're seeing is every hour, there's a big spike in just everything. That might be important to us. Is there some process that's just dying at 45 after the hour? Is there a lot of usage? But we're starting to get this information, starting to get this value. Now I want to go ahead and jump to another. Um, and here's the UI paint times. I'm sorry, this is I referred to this earlier in the um, in my um, preamble, um, but this is showing us those paint times. So we're starting to see when the first contentful paint is, when something is painting or showing up on the screen. And then we're seeing the largest. So we're starting to see here as components are loaded onto our website or into our application when they occurred, which is just more valuable information. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and look at, um, this is going to be the application Actually, we can go to, let's see. <clears throat> so we can see this uh, uh, RUM overview application. This is the first panel that loaded. And when it did, it didn't load. We just needed to refresh there. So just a little, little illuminate the uh, fun experience for you. So just you need to refresh that dashboard. Uh, but then we get to see our data in there. So um, that was seeing our application information. But what I want to do now is I want to go to our application health across services dashboard. So we're going to go back to our dashboards up here. And we're going to select the one that has uh, number four, that first one, application health, health across services. What we're going to look at here is application health across our services. Like I said, naming not very creative. But what we want to focus on specifically within here is latency. Because what we're starting to see in here is latency that's occurring across our application. Latency is not good. And so we want to try and figure out what's causing the latency and probably equally, you know, how to, re how to resolve it. So how do we go ahead from this view of just seeing latency occurring and go ahead and start to get a better understanding of that through Sumo logic without doing a lot of typing, a lot of clicking even? Just how can we do this pretty simply? Well, this is what the lab is going to have us do or is having us do. So at this point, we should be up to step um, about step nine of the lab. And once again, if you need help, please holler. I see some people asking questions. Great. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go to our latency panel and we're going to select the highest spike. I'm going to select, well, it does, actually doesn't matter. I said highest spike. Let's stick with that highest spike. So I'm going to go ahead and select my highest spike. I'm going to click on it. And when I do on the right hand side of the screen, a uh, pop up, I guess a sort of pop up, pop right uh, occurs. And this gives us information about the metric that we just clicked on. So we clicked on this blue spike, and now we're seeing the components of that spike. And the fact that this metric is related to latency. So we see this latency is occurring. What we want to do here is we want to go ahead and click on the entities tab. The Entities tab is going to get us information about 
the application and the latency we're looking at, but it's also going to give us the ability to go deeper and start to look at the services, the pods, and get more, you know, just deeper into what was going on or not going on. So what I'm going to do here and what the instructions are going to have us do is we're going to go ahead and click on this service, this down arrow. And we're going to go to the open in. And we're going to go to traces. So just once again, we're going to go to the, uh, so we clicked on the, the latency, the highest spike. We're going to go, the right hand side of the screen should pop open. Um, we're going to go to the service and just expand that out, out or up. And then we're going to select open in traces. And uh, let's see what I do wrong here. Let me modify my data point, open in traces. Josh, it's probably better to do this from application point of view or, or the service that is not really an ELB load balancer because that's dynamic. Okay, so just use it, do go at the application level? Yep. Okay, so let's do that. Thank you, uh, Paul. And so everybody, so uh, even though we got to experience that, now we're gonna do it. Uh, so we're gonna go back to that application and we're gonna just open it straight in traces. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, good point. I need to modify the lab a little bit there. Um, the screen's going to tell you a little bit about tracing. So um, we're about to discuss it a little bit more, thir uh, more thoroughly, but we start to, uh, you know, there's a little guide here. So if you want to go ahead and kind of read it or uh, you in interact with it, feel free to. I'm going to close it out. And what we see now are traces. So what we see are all those transactions, all those front end clicks um, that were occurring within our application. Now, we want to go ahead and get a little bit deeper in these. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drill into one of these clicks. But what we're going to do before that is we're going to go ahead and on the uh, column for the number of errors, we're going to sort those uh, sort that column. I just want to find some data that's a little a uh, little more illustrative. So we should be in our tracing screen or environment. We should be able to then go to the number of errors and click on it to sort high, low, low, high. In this case, high, low. And then we're going to go ahead and select one of the traces um, that has errors. So it doesn't really matter which one. Now we're being introduced to the trace view. So um, we're going to go through it right now. But of course, feel free to read the, uh, read the screen. And what we're seeing here is a trace. We're seeing for our transaction the steps that occurred within the process. What we want to focus on here are the lines that have red horizontal uh, red horizontal lines, that's where our focus needs to be. The reason being, that's where errors occurred here. We saw on this previous screen that there's a number of errors, and now we're starting to see those errors in this transaction. What we want to do here, though, is we want to go ahead and click on the coffee machine. Oh, down here, I'm sorry, uh, the get coffee. And we're gonna go ahead and once again, go to entities. So right now we're looking at the coffee machine and we're gonna go ahead and look at our entities. And specifically, we're gonna scroll down to the pod and the pod's gonna give us an indication of what has gone wrong here. And what we see in this pod is a spike for CPU usage as well as memory usage. And so what we can gather from here is the fact that the health of the pod seems to be, as it says in the lab guide, experiencing CPU and memory spikes. Not really a good thing. And so that could be causing some of our issues here. And so we were now able to dig into a trace, see what was going on at the pod level and seeing that it's not really good. These spikes are kind of concerning. And so that's one example of utilizing RUM. So any questions about that? I'm gonna go back to my deck just to kind of keep me honest here. Oh, that's convenient. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, let me log in here real fast. Oh, even more convenient. Um, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start to uh, jump into lab two here. So let me go ahead and authenticate, even though I did prior to today's meeting. Cool. 
All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and um, take a look at, uh, go back to the slide deck and take a look at a few more slides and then we'll get back into our lab guide. So in our deck here, So we're going to look at service maps. So I'm going to go ahead and just share a slide or two, and then we're going to dig into these. So what are service maps? Why are we looking at this thing? Well, what service maps are going to give us is, as it says here, a high level view of our application environment. So in the UI, it's going to present to us using tracing data in real time, this view, which is going to give us a better understanding of the application architecture and those dependencies. The service map is going to outline what's going on and where there are errors. And we're gonna see that in just a moment. So once again, in our microservices review, front end, now we're talking a little bit more about back end. So here we have a service map. And let's go ahead and let's let's do this lab together. Let's, you know, let's just do this. Um, so we're gonna do our service map walkthrough. So we're gonna go back into Sumo Logic. Uh, we're gonna to go to the new or we can go home. So either way, we're going to either go home or click on plus new. And we're going to select service map. So when we do plus new, we find our service map. Once again, it's going to give us some information about service maps, uh, hopefully the same information I'm about to provide you. And what we see here is a service map. So um, what we have is a visual representation of different things going on within our coffee uh, organization. Now here we want to go ahead and specifically filter our data. We don't have to, or in the real world we may not have to, but for this exercise we want to. We want to look specifically at just the application name equally the coffee bar app because we want to look at coffee data. We don't want to look at some other data that's not relevant to today's conversation. Remember this is a training environment, lots of data in there. So we're going to go to the application name and we're going to select the coffee bar app. Don't even need to type it in, just use the down arrow. And now what we're seeing is specifically our coffee bar app, and we're seeing those components of the coffee bar app. So we see here the coffee bar. We see the cash desk, which I alluded to earlier, where the payment and the, the, uh, the pricing information is kept. On the other side of the coffee machine, the bar, we see really the portion we were just looking at. We see the coffee machine. We see the machine service, we see the coffee service, we see the water service, we see colors here, red meaning an anomaly, as dictated by the bottom left legend. We see the front end here. So here we see that website that we went to that also has an anomaly. Now in this case we're going to do more back end work than front end, but this service map is telling us where things went wrong. We also have the ability to go ahead and customize this a little bit. So as I mouse over, and please do, we see um, the red representing the error or the anomaly. It doesn't necessarily be truly an error, it's an anomaly. We have the ability to go ahead and modify some settings. I'm not going to go too deep into these settings, but we have the ability to start to define the anomaly detection that's taking place. And if you've used our outliers before, um, this is what it's utilizing, and you can modify it for your own needs. For now, the defaults are perfectly fine, so we'll just stick with them, but did want to just show you, you do have some uh, additional functionality. What I want to do now, though, is I want to go ahead and, like I said, or showed, was I was mousing over uh, one of the items. And specifically, what I want to do is mouse over the coffee service or the water service, doesn't matter. Let's use the coffee service. Let's be consistent as a group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the coffee service on that red circle. And on the right hand side, I'm going to get a new pop up uh, menu. And what this is showing me is similar to the other one. It's showing me information about the coffee service, showing me uh, latency um, issues. And latency here seems to be the anomaly. So it's showing me this here. But what we can do is we can go ahead and open this information in our tracing environment. So what we're going to do is once again, we're going to go to open in under the coffee service. And we're going to select traces. Because we want to see this red, this coffee service is red for a reason. Why is it red? Well, let's go ahead and figure it out. So we should open in traces. And now we have this trace environment that you are now becoming more familiar with every time, which is great. 
we see here, um, as described, we see uh, the trace IDs, the transactions, the root service, which is our coffee bar, uh, the duration breakdown, um, which we're going to look at in more detail. Um, but what we want to do is, once again, we want to look for a number of errors and look for something that has a large number of errors. And so pick one. It doesn't really matter which one. And when we do, when we open that, what we're going to get is that same or very similar interface that we just saw earlier with our traces, showing us for this transaction, the components of the transaction, the interaction with that front uh, page app, uh, some Lambda functionality we have going on here that's checking, uh, checking suites function as we call it, our coffee bar front end as we've been alluding to, um, and some other stuff. What we want to do here is we want to go ahead and once again, dig into uh, the, the uh, uh, the error span. So we can go ahead and utilize this uh, feature up here, which I don't think I showed earlier, this uh, error spans only. What it does is it shows only the error spans. I don't know that it helps that much, uh, but it is supposed to clean things up. You can also zoom in and out of here. So uh, by the way, so while it's very crowded, um, you know, a lot going on, you can use the zoom to start to uh, get a better picture of what's going on. Now, what we want to do here is we want to utilize or look into the get coffee service. Because we see, here's the get coffee service. We see it's in red. So this is letting us know something has gone wrong here. Now, what's gone wrong? Well, let's go ahead and figure it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this bottom coffee service um, brown color, army green, whatever color that is supposed to be. I'm going to go in and click on it. And then on the right hand side of the screen, I get that pop up that we keeps popping up. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and utilize our logs. Re remember, when we're ingesting data for observability, it's logs, metrics, and traces. We looked at some of the tracing. We looked at some of the metrics, the latency up and down. But we, logs are important. Logs are going to tell us what has happened. And so to prove that, let's go see what has happened. What has happened in this transaction related to the coffee service that is preventing it from being, uh, from, from being successful? Well, let's go ahead and look at it right now. What we're going to do on the right hand side of the screen on the logs icon or logs uh, uh, verbiage is select the first icon, the span ID one. What this span ID is going to show us, once again, going to the log search page, have all this great information, is going to give us an indication of what went wrong. We're going to read this information going from the bottom to the top. These messages are in time order, but sequential from top to bottom or bottom to top, excuse me. So what do we see here in our logs? Well, in the first log message, we see that the order was received for coffee grains. So someone placed the order. The system needs coffee grains to produce that order. Well, what we see here is the problem why there was an error. Lack of coffee grains in the system. There wasn't enough coffee. Someone either needs to modify that and, and more frequently uh, put coffee in, or maybe we need to create a monitor for that, but that's what's occurring here. And that's what's helpful. We now know what went wrong with this transaction, and now we can start to figure out how to resolve it. Do we train our baristas better to, to add more coffee more frequently? Do we create bigger hoppers that hold more beans at a time? Um, do we sell smaller cups of coffee? You know, Whatever it might be, we can start to make those decisions from, from this data. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump in here. Uh, jump back into the slide deck. Um, any questions? Please ask. Um, should be just about done with that uh, lab guide. Let's just make sure we hit everything else in here. Um, let's see. So we talked about service maps. We talked about traces, um, and we were looking at the uh, traces. Um, I'll do a little span walkthrough. Let's do that. Uh, I'll just walk through this one real quickly. Uh, span analytics. So what spans allow us to do is to filter, as it says, filter, aggregate our tracing data at a span level so we can understand the performance behavior of app application services. So to, so to do this, it's not in the lab guide, but if you want to play along, feel free to. The steps are you know, going to be pretty step simple as, as you're about to see. What we can do is we can go ahead, go back into Sumo, go to the plus new, and select spans. Now, once again, it's going to give us a little, uh, potentially will give us a little dialogue on what spans are and hopefully kind of mirror what I just described to you. So if you want to go ahead and uh, go ahead and read that, I'm going to skip it. And what we can do here is we can start to filter some data. 
So what we're going to, I'm going to do here um, is uh, I'm going to start to uh, run a filter. So I'm going to go ahead and filter my data based on whatever criteria I want. The first criteria I'm going to utilize is looking for a service of the coffee bar front end. Once again, I just want to look at the front end. I just want to look at coffee data. I want to just segment my data. My data. I don't want to look at all data in Sumo. I just want to segment or filter to specific kinds. I'm going to go ahead and click search just to make sure I'm getting data, which I am, which is good, but always good to check. Now I can go ahead and start to aggregate the data. Using this visualize section, I can start to say only show me data that's occurred in various groupings. In this case, what if I want to look at a duration of 95%, a 95% uh, tile for duration, I want to look for those longer durations. I can go ahead and do so. So duration, percentage, 95 or 90 or whatever percentage I want to utilize. I can then group my data by time. So I can say, show me my data in one minute components. And then I can start to limit the amount of data I'm looking at with my top capability. This top is going to only return the top X, the top X number of results. And so I can do a five here. Then I'm going to go ahead and search. What I'm presented with is the data that matched here. But then in my aggregation, I start to see that data charted for me. So when my message is, is showing me that raw data that matched my criteria. And then on the right, when I click aggregates, now I'm seeing this graphical data. And so now I'm seeing this duration percentage 95 has spiked. And so this spike might be concerning. Why are things taking longer than they did previously? Well, we can go in and kind of start digging there. All right, so any questions about any of that? All right, let's, uh, let's uh, a couple more slides here and then uh, we'll have you uh, out on time, maybe even a moment earlier. So uh, just jumping back into my deck here. Oh, the other portion of the span analytics that I forgot to show, I'm sorry, I'm probably one of the better uh, features of it is the uh, messages feature, but what we call facets, which is essentially the ability to start to filter or show those things that you're interested in. If you wanna see the collector that's involved in here, we can go ahead and display that value within our data. So this is very similar to our, uh, if you've used our field browser in our uh, log environment, very similar idea. Also get to see some of the values in here as well, uh, which is kind of cool. So uh, this can be really helpful to um, just dig deeper. Uh, let's see, go back to the deck here. That we did already. Uh, so in conclusion, yeah, let's, let's use this. So we looked at, uh, in the last uh, couple of moments here, we looked at um, the uh, service maps using those RUM dashboards that really use monitoring to understand the customer's experience, seeing where those uh, anomalies are occurring um, and understanding what was going on with them, using the tracing to drill down. So going from, rather than looking at metrics traces now starting to dig into those logs and see, like I said, what occurred. And then those span analytics utilizing the query language to go ahead and start to get an understanding of the information provided by a span and equally important being able to start to filter in there and isolate only the things that you are interested in. All right, so let's go ahead and a little summary here. So uh, tracing is important. I, I, I feel this title of the slide is uh, uh, a bold statement. Tracing is important. I think, I think that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty important. Um, and tracing is an in-demand feature. Using the transaction traces to troubleshoot those performance issues and get detailed low-level insight into how your app is uh, working. And also the ability to get those, you know, once again, observe those apps and microservices at the individual request level to pinpoint issues that might be happening with specific or particular microservices. So hopefully that gave you a sense of why tracing is important. Uh, next steps, uh, so uh, getting certified, um, not in this specific class, but we do have a whole certification class on observability. So um, an observability fundamentals class, an observability administrative class, 
um, teaching one of those, I think, in about half an hour. Um, and so that's going to be a great opportunity for you to get more involved in observability and sumo logic, a little bit deeper in the material, actually a lot deeper. Those are uh, three hour classes um, and there's two of them. So a uh, great place to learn more about sumo. Um, some more options. We have self-paced learning, uh, on-demand learning through the learning portal. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to utilize that. And then we also have, I'll, I'll share this link right, whoop, uh, this link here uh, to give you access to our upcoming trainings and paste that into the chat. Lots of links today. Um, uh, Post Illuminate. So, uh, you know, thank you for attending today, but if you want to uh, learn more with us, uh, certainly the next two days are going to be perfect for that. But uh, next month we're doing something as well. So uh, on the 19th, actually a little bit scattered through October, um, we're going to be having uh, search jams, uh, regionally based, but feel free to join them. Um, and these are going to be great opportunity for you to, to, like I said, just get more ingrained deeper with the material. Um, so certainly encourage you to join those. Uh, let me go ahead and put a few more links in here. This, just want to make sure I'm kind of pointing you to uh, more information if you're interested in it. And then the other link I wanted to share is the one I actually started off with today, but for some of you, and I won't be offended, is the most important link you'll get today is to get your swag. So for everybody, unfortunately not in India, I do apologize for that, but um, everyone, everyone else around the world, uh, I pasted a form link in so you can go ahead and um, uh, get your uh, free swag. All right, so thank you everybody for attending today. I hope you found this entertaining, hopefully informative as well. Both were kind of my goal. Um, before we call today, any last minute questions, um, thoughts? I see there were a couple in the chat and uh, Powell has been answering them, which is great. So I'll go ahead and just uh, see any, uh, any other questions, thoughts. All right, so let's call, let's go ahead and yeah, cool. cool. All right, let's let's do it. So good intro. All right, thank you, Scott. So let's call it a day. Let's give you some time back. Thank you again. Hope you found this, like I said, both entertaining and informative. Um, and hopefully, I'll see you in another class. So um, I'll be teaching a lot today, and so I hope to see you see you guys out there. So thank you again for attending, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>